feel the real figures. For the last decade, Aliyah from North America, US and Canada, has averaged 2,400 individuals, not, not families, 2,400 individual Jews a year. 2,406 million. Now that doesn't mean that 2,400 Jews went and stayed. Let's not get carried away by the uh, Zionists. Not only is there no Aliyah, the tragedy is that the, the traffic is in the other direction. Jews are leaving Israel in droves, and thank God for, for, for U.S. quotas on immigration. Thank God for that. The best thing Zionism has going for it. If there were no quotas in this country, half of Israel would be driving taxis in the city on the way to Los Angeles. And that's not the joke. That's not funny. That's a weeping for generations. That's the bankruptcy of Zionism. The tragedy. But what emerges from all of this is the essential question. What is going to be? How many Arabs will there be in the state of Israel in 10 years? Forget the territories, the state. The Galilee today has a majority of Arabs, know that. The Galilee at this moment is 54% Arab. We have, lost, we have lost the north already. The most sensitive area, bordering on Lebanon and on the Golan Heights. When you travel on the Akot Sfat Road in the Galilee, except for Kalmyin, there is not one sizable Jewish center in that entire area. You are in Palestine. And not the night goes by that Jewish cars are not stoned on the Akot Sfat Road. The army has built access roads around Arab villages in the Galilee so that Jews should not have to ride through them at night to be a free people in our own land. It's not just the Galilee, just 10 kilometers behind the coastline of Israel. 10 kilometers right behind such cities as Petah Tikva and Prasaba and Manana and Herzliya and Netanya, there is what is called the Mishulash, the Triangle. 200,000 Arabs of Israel, citizens, live there. 200,000 in places like Kafar Qasim and Taiba and Tira and Baka um, and um, Al-Fakham and so on. They hate Israel without passion. And I'm appalled at the contempt of liberal Jews for Arabs when they come to me and they say, are there any good Arabs? Do you know what that, listen to what that person, aren't any good Arabs. What does a Jew mean by a good Arab? He means an Arab who despite the fact that he thinks that the Jews took that country from him, will sit quietly. That's a good Arab to him. A Christian. Like some, like some darky on a plantation, gone with the wind. Thank you, Master. Or they'll say, well, the Arabs should be happy. Should be happy. We've given them electricity, indoor toilets. They should sit, sit happily, quietly. How many times have you heard that nonsense from people who think that you can buy a person's national pride with an indoor toilet? Takes a certain kind of, of Jewish mind, liberal Jewish mind, to come they live better than the Arabs in Iraq. Do you think that that matters to the Arab? The Arab in Iraq lives in his own country. The Arab in Israel lives in a Jewish state. Do you think there is one Arab in Israel who enjoys living in the Jewish state? How many, how many Jews in this room would enjoy living in Jerry Fowler's Christian state? Yeah, that's exactly how many Arabs enjoy living in the Jewish state? The contempt that liberals have for Arabs is unbelievable. Because they have contempt for themselves. And they assume that every person is as sick as, as they are. You think that there is one Arab in Israel who enjoys living in 
a country whose basic law, Chok Hashvut, the laws, uh, the laws uh, return, applies to Jews only. The law return says that any Jew, not non-Jew, any Jew, has the right to automatically come to Israel and live. Citizen, automatic. You think that there is one arm that thinks that that's a good law, a decent law? Or do you think that they think that is a racist law? And if Ben Gurion had not passed that law in, in 1950, and I, when I was in Knesset, would have proposed that as a bill, word for word, do you know what they would have called me? They would have called me what they called me. <laughs> You think that there is one Arab in Israel who takes pride when he when he sings his national anthem? Picture the sea. Picture the sea. The Arab of Israel rises to sing his national anthem, Hatikva. His shoulders are thrust back and his chest is out, and pride courses through every vein <laughs> as he sings the words, Nefesh Yudiomia, the soul of the Jew yearns. I tell you, it speaks to you. It speaks to you, the soul of the Jew yearning. And when he finishes with the words, Hatikva Bashnot Al Payim, the hope of 2,000 years, I he just breaks down in tears as he thinks to himself, Ah, have my Zayda waited 2,000 years for the Jews to come home? Every Tisha they would, they would, the Arabs ran to the waving wall and said, Dear God, when are the Jews coming home? Hatikva means the hope, and it was our hope, and it was their nightmare, and why can't we see that, and why, and why must liberals have such contempt for human beings, because it's too painful for them to see the truth. Independence Day was just two weeks ago, less than. The Arabs of Israel rushed into the streets that morning early to celebrate their defeat. Of course. Of course. They hate Israel. They think that we're thieves. I understand them perfectly. They're totally wrong. But I understand them. When some Jewish fundraiser gets up at some, uh, at some breakfast or some brunch or some lunch or some dinner or some supper, wherever Jews eat and raise money, and he says, uh, we came to the land and we found the desert and we turned it into a garden. So the Jew says, that's a garden, nice. Try that once on an Arab and he'll tell you, you're right, no question about it. But it was my desert, now it's your garden. Don't have contempt for them. They're bad. Oh, are they bad? Are they bad? And they're wrong. Oh, are they wrong? But they don't believe. So don't play games with them. They believe it's their country. They believe that we're thieves. And don't play games like Abba Ibn, who in 12 languages at the same time will, will babble as they will. It's true that you think it's yours, but take half of it and let's live in peace. That's the difference between an Arafat and an Abba Ibn. Arafat gets up and says, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. And he says, well, it's half yours, it's half mine. <laughs> I tell you, what a wonderful debate that would make. <coughs> How many Arabs would there be in Israel in 10 years? And when a third of the country is Arab, you're going to have another Lebanon. And every night you watch on television as Peter Jennings intoned, but this time from the Galilee. And last night, three more Arabs were killed by soldiers in the Galilee. You want that? I don't want that. I don't want to kill Arabs. And I certainly don't want Arabs to kill Jews. I want them separate. I want them out, and may they live happily in their own country. They have 22 countries. God bless them all.